Hi, and congratulations on your 2022 Nissan Pathfinder Platinum Edition. This is an unbelievable vehicle. Nissan did an amazing job when they redesigned this, but you already know that, and that's why you got this. We're going to go back through, and we're going to give you an overview of everything that you got with this, because there is quite a bit. There's a lot of technology in this, but we want to make it as simple as possible for you to get up to speed and make sure that you can use everything to the fullest extent. At the end of this, if you still have any questions, Please don't hesitate to call, text, email, or stop into a Regan's Nissan at 60 Baker Drive. We'll be sure to ask to help you with anything that you need. Let's have a look at what you got. We're going to start right here with this amazing 9-inch full-color touchscreen display to which you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with, as well as wireless Apple CarPlay. So we're going to see that in just a moment. But we've got everything here, and I've got 12 presets for FM when I go to Source. I've got AM, FM, satellite radio, which comes free for the first three months. After that, if you don't want it, don't do anything. It should just stop. If you do want it, it's going to revert back to the preview station, which is channel one. It'll have a toll-free number on there. Just give them a call and they'll help you get everything all set up. USB one and two are down here. So I can see I've got a USB-C and a USB-A, which is your traditional USB. That's one and two. I've also got Bluetooth. Now what we don't see here is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto just because they haven't been hooked up yet. We're going to back out of here. And as I said, very easy to operate everything. You just go through and set up whatever it is that you're looking for. Also, it does come equipped with navigation. With the navigation, there are free updates. If you check out my channel, there is a couple of videos there on how to do the updates for free. One by USB, the other by Wi-Fi. Whichever one is going to work better for you at the time very very easy to operate this if you know a point of destination or a point of interest that you're looking for you can just come in here and coffee shops for example will give me a list of coffee shops that are closest and then give me directions to there however if i know exactly where i want to go i can just go destination and then i can punch in street address if it is outside of the area that you're in set your state or province first also, again, if it's outside of the area that you're in, set your city next and then do house number and street address. Otherwise, if I go in here, I can just do this. And it's got predictive texting here. So Baker, Drive, to which I'm gonna say that one. It automatically knows that I'm in Nova Scotia. If I say Halifax or Dartmouth, there's what I want. So it goes through. Now I've got my volume off at the moment, so it's not really going to do a whole lot unless I hit start. But that will give me everything that I need there. So I'm going to back right out of here again. Back to where I started. Lots of options here. Gives you all kinds that you can do. Now this is full touch screen as well. So I can pinch to zoom out or do this to zoom in. Either way, it'll give me everything that I need. So I'm gonna back out of here entirely, back to where I started. My settings down here will take me in. So if I wanna set up a phone, I'm gonna to go to settings, and then connections, and then I'm gonna hit add new. From there, I'm gonna go into the Bluetooth settings on my phone. I'm going to hit, I'm going to look for my pathfinder, tap on that. And then up here, you will get a number that comes up. Confirm it's the same thing on your phone and press pair. If you have an Apple phone, it's going to ask you to allow once. If you have an Android phone, it's going to allow you to, uh, to allow twice. Also, if you have an Android phone and it has a lock screen on it, once you've done this on your phone, back out to the main settings, go down to smart lock. And then you're going to go in and you want to add a trusted device. And from there, you're going to add my Pathfinder. If you don't do this, your phone will disconnect shortly after it locks back up on you. So we're going to cancel this and I'm going to come out of here. The only other thing that you might want to be aware of is your clock. Now, because there is a navigation system, I'm going to set my clock mode for auto. And I can see my clock has the right time on it up here. And I can set the date format here, which I'm not concerned about at the moment. 
Now when daylight savings hits, this will all happen automatically. So that's all good there. And I'm just gonna jump right back out. Down below here, I'm gonna press auto on this just for the moment. This is my climate control. Now what I recommend is find a temperature that you are comfortable with, set it and then press auto. You'll never have to worry about the temperature again. It will do what it has to, to either get you up or down to this temperature as fast as possible. And then it's gonna do just what it needs to, to maintain that temperature. Now my, my air conditioning is here. If I wanna manually set anything, I can do the fan right here, or I can set where my airflow is gonna be here. But the moment I do that, auto is gonna turn off as we see right there. So I'm gonna put that back to auto. The sync button over here. So if my passenger wants a different temperature, they can set that just by turning the dial. Once they get where they're going and you drop them off and it's just you back in the vehicle, press sync and everything resets back to the driver's side. Now, because it's a Pathfinder, it does have tri-zone climate control. So I'm gonna turn that on right here. We'll also see in the back in a few minutes that you can set everything right from the back or I can set it up here so that at this point, I can change the temperature up here. I can set it for auto. I can change the fan speed or where the airflow is gonna go. I'm gonna turn that rear control back off. Now up front, everything is synced, but in the back it's not. And if I push this sync button again, now everything is synced to the driver's side, making it really easy. Also up here, I have my heated steering wheel. So that's gonna take my leather wrapped heated wheel up here and turn on the heat for it so that in the winter, everything stays toasty warm. On the outside of my dials, are my climate control for my seats. So I have heated seats with high, medium, and low. I also have cooled seats with high, medium, and low as well. Down below in here, you do have a wireless charger. When your phone is in here and it's charging, this will light up a yellow and it'll stay lit up as long as your phone is charging. So that's the easiest way to know. Our gear shift right here is what we call a drive a select by wire so with this the easiest way to explain this is we've got reverse neutral and drive with drive manual for park as long as your foot's on the brake simply push down the p that puts you into park and it lights up from there you're going to move this the direction of the position that you want so if i want drive i'm going to move all the way down that puts me in drive and it lights up here. I can also see my drive indicator here. For reverse, you do need to squeeze in this thumb button right here. And as long as this is squeezed in, push to the reverse. And right away I can hear the sonar. I'm gonna dismiss that for the moment. For neutral, there are two clicks to this. So I'm gonna move one click down because I'm coming down from reverse to neutral. And that will put me in neutral. Or if I had put, if I was in drive, I would have to push up to neutral. I'm gonna push P for park. And again, we're gonna go into reverse here for a moment and I'm gonna turn off that sonar again because we can clearly hear it. With this, you have your backup camera and a 360 degree around view monitor with moving object detection. Now the sonar is there because you can hear it. And if we get to the point that this is flashing right, I'm still backing up it will fully apply the brakes for me. That is my rear emergency braking that goes with the rear sonar. While it's on this screen, if I press the camera button, I can now see down the passenger side of the vehicle. And this is great if I'm parking next to a curb. I just wanna put this yellow line here right on the curb. That means I'm exactly six inches from the curb. If I push it again, I now have a view simply out the back of the vehicle and then once more puts me to where I started. Now I'm back in park. Because I'm in park and I can do this in drive as well, my view is now out the front of the vehicle because I had hit the camera button. Now this camera button will do the same thing as in the back, except the third push turns it off. So we're back in park. Down below here, we have our electronic parking brake. To engage that, I simply gotta pull up. I can see it turns right there and shows me an indicator right down below here. To turn this off, if I simply try and push down, it tells me I need to have my foot on the brake and then push down and it will disengage the parking brake. 
auto hold is a neat little feature. So for this, you do need to be buckled. And then when you're, in, when you're buckled up and driving along, so I'm gonna put this in drive right now and it's automatically gonna turn green. Down below here, I have a little circle with an A and the word hold. Now, because that is on and it is green, I can take my foot off the brake and the vehicle, despite being in drive, is held in place. That is holding my brake on. Now, the moment I touch the gas, that turns white and I'm moving. So I'm gonna reverse. I'm gonna go back to where I was. And I'm gonna go in park. Now, because this is green, when I press the park button, that automatically engages my parking brake. Great feature if you're stuck at a red light in construction or if you're at a drive through and things are moving really slow. My auto on off, so this will actually disable the auto start function. So when the vehicle is idle and it shows me right here, it is off because I've just turned it off, the vehicle will stay running. If I push this again, it's back on. So when I come to a red light and I'm idling, it will actually turn the motor off. And as soon as you touch the gas, it turns on, you're moving. My drive mode selector is down here. Now, if you're gonna tow, you've got a 6,000 pound towing capacity and it is fully wired in with a class four tow hitch receiver back there. We'll see that in a little bit. But at that point, you do wanna turn your dial till you get down here. The little light here will move down to this one. But as you're turning it, I don't need to be watching that dial. I can see up here, it's gonna do that for me so that I can keep my eyes forward. And now I can see the light has moved down. So that's my tow mode. Sport mode is if I'm losing my passing lane and wanna get out and around somebody in a hurry, I can put it into sport mode. I'm gonna have a little more torque on the motor. It's gonna be more responsive and it will give me that extra push that I need to get out and around in a hurry. Just don't forget to take it back out of sport mode because it is harder on gas. Eco mode is the exact opposite. You're gonna get better gas mileage in eco mode. However, just be aware that trying to get out and around somebody in a hurry or pull away from a dead stop in a hurry is gonna feel a little bit sluggish. Normal mode or auto is where you're gonna to default to every time you turn the vehicle on. So this is right up here. That is your normal driving mode. It's a four wheel drive vehicle, but it will engage four wheel drive as needed. You're gonna drive in front wheel 90 to 95% of the time. Pulling away from the dead stop, you're gonna be in all wheel drive. As soon as you get going, it's gonna drop down to front wheel drive. And any time that you hit any kind of traction, it's automatically going to engage to four wheel drive. Snow mode is my next one, which is gonna be great for those wintertime drives where you've come out of a grocery store or a big box store and it started snowing out and you wanna make that trip home, but you wanna be as safe as possible. Snow mode will kick in the all wheel drive system a lot sooner and hold it in much, much longer so that you're in all wheel drive for extended periods of time on your way home. Mud and rut is in case you're driving down an old dirt road, maybe the mud is really, really heavy or there's some pretty deep ruts there that have a lot of mud in them. This will kick in your all wheel drive system fairly quick and hold it in a long time. My last one down is sand mode. So if you're in an area that's got a lot of sand, maybe you're on the edge of a beach or something, it will allow those front wheels to slip a little bit before it kicks you into all wheel, or sorry, four wheel drive, but then it's gonna hold you almost exclusively in four wheel drive until you're done. So we're just gonna put that back to auto at the moment. I can see in here, I've got a huge storage area with lots of options there. I have an auto dimming rear view mirror with home link. So I can set up to three garage door openers on my mirror here. All you gotta do is in, while you're parked in front of your garage door, press and hold your garage door opener with one hand and press and hold whichever the buttons you wanna be synced up to with your other. And this light is gonna go red, it's gonna be blinking. And I don't recall if it starts off slow or fast, but as soon as it switched to the opposite one, let go and you're good to go. You also have a huge panoramic moonroof up here with easy to operate controls. So the right side will control the screen on us and I can stop it any way along the way. The left side is for the window itself where if I push straight up on it, it will tilt it to vent 
and then I can push forward to close it. If I push back, it's gonna start to open it up. And again, I can stop it anywhere along the way, push forward to close it. Up here at the steering wheel, new to the Pathfinder this year on top of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is awesome. With your adaptive cruise, we also get Pro Pilot Assist. So I'm gonna press the blue button here to turn on my cruise control. We'll come back to the Pro Pilot in a couple of minutes. Uh, there is a screen that we use for that. But basically with your adaptive cruise, which you can set the distance right here, and it shows me right down here while it's on. So three car lengths plus safe distance, or two, or one, back up to three. With that, just to give you an idea, one car length plus safe distance while doing 100 kilometers an hour is approximately two and a half car lengths between you and the vehicle in front of you. Now with the Pro Pilot, it's gonna make use of the adaptive cruise which must be set. And then from there, it's gonna go through and using the camera up in the windshield, read the lines on either side of you and keep you centered in your lane. I do have a video on exactly how the Pro Pilot operates just to give you an idea of all the inner workings of it. Really neat feature. It was designed primarily for long drives or late night drives, but you can use it anytime that you've got the cruise set. Setting the cruise is very simple. You simply tap down to set your speed, tap up to resume if you've had to knock the cruise off. Cancel is just pushing in on it. If my cruise is set, I can tap up a few times to increase the speed or down to decrease. This button here is gonna answer a call or hang up. This button is gonna allow me to make an outbound call. Now it does a lot more than that as well, depending on the type of phone that you have. For example, if I have an Apple phone, pressing and holding this for two seconds and letting go will access Siri. If you have an Android phone, do the exact same thing to get Google Assistant. However, with my navigation system over here, if I go into destination, these buttons are all going to gray out while I'm driving because it is a hazard to try and set it while you're in motion. However, to avoid having to pull over to the side of the road, I can simply use this button to do this like so. Please say your select a command. Navigation. Navigation. Please say your select a command from the displayed list. Street address. 60 Baker Drive, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Please wait. Did you mean 60 Baker Drive, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia? Please say yes or say a number from the displayed list. Yes. Yes. 60 Baker Drive, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Calculate route. Adjust location or change address. Calculate route. Calculating route. The route calculation is complete. Proceed to the nearest road. So just like that, I can set my navigation strictly by voice while I'm driving without ever having to pull over as long as I know exactly where it is that I'm going. So I'm gonna cancel back out of this for the moment. And then we're back to where we started there. So there's tons of options available that you can do with this voice recognition. Get familiar with them. And before we move to the right side, my controls for my wipers are here. Now with this, as long as you simply set this control here, and then so right now my wipers are off. If I put it into the intermediate, intermittent spot, I'm set for auto. So these are rain sensing wipers that I don't have to worry about anymore. So we're just gonna leave them there. On the left side of my wheel, I have the volume for my radio. Now with this, I can go through and increase or decrease very easily. Using these two buttons here, I can go through the presets on my radio, which it will show me up here on my home screen as well. Or if I'm streaming through Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, or Bluetooth, these two buttons will skip tracks. And before we get into this, this little button here, this view that I have is a new view. Not everybody is completely comfortable with this view. So if you're used to more of a traditional view, I'm gonna press this button and then I'm gonna press in the dial for okay. And I can see it puts me back to a more traditional view on the display. I'm gonna set this back for the moment because I want the maximum view here for the digital display. 
This is my home screen, which I can control all of from right here. Left and right arrows. My left arrow is also a back arrow in case I go into any settings, which we'll see in a minute. And then my dial, I can scroll if there is additional screens on the one that I'm on, which we'll go over in a second, or simply press it in for OK. On my home screen, I have a compass, which will change if I do set a destination. I have my radio info. I've got my speedometer over here. I can see what drive mode I'm in here. My gas gauge is down here and the gray bar means it is full. That will start to come down as you're driving. Also down below here is my distance to empty and my odometer right over here. So lots and lots of information. The next screen over to the right, a couple things to be aware of. First, I have all of my information here, but I also have two dots over here. So I have my average fuel economy, which is running very high because in one hour, it's only gone 16.6 .6 kilometers. I have my average speed below it, my trip odometer, and my total time running since reset last. And if I press okay on this screen, nothing happens. But if I press and hold, now it asks me which one of them I wanna reset. I'm gonna do them all at this point, and then scroll down, say yes, and then press the back button down here and now everything is reset and we can see that timer starting to tick up. Now I mentioned that there is two dots over here. That means that there's multiple screens. So if I scroll down, I can see just my average fuel economy. Now we see we're on manual reset two. If I press the okay button, fuel reset will reset every single time you gas up, all four of these will reset. So that's really neat. Manual one or two, or if you wanna track anything manually. Next screen to the right is gonna be for your tire pressure monitoring system. This will appear once you start to drive and it will show you all four wheels individually. As well, in between the wheels on the axles, it will actually show you what the pressure should be set to. Now, no matter what screen you're on, if you get a low tire pressure, it will pop up and tell you low tire pressure. From there, it's also gonna tell you which tire is low and what the exact pressure is. Once you do that, simply take your vehicle to the nearest air pump, leave it running, and start putting air in the tire it says needs air. When you do that, as soon as it gets up to the proper pressure, the horn will beep to tell you to stop. If for some reason you continue putting air in or went to the wrong tire, when you hit the upper limit, the horn will beep three times in a row, please stop putting air in your tire at that point. However, if that happens, Start letting some air back out until it gets down to the right pressure. The horn will beep once to tell you to stop. Now, as I scroll down to the next screen, I can see this screen here is literally going to show me how much fuel I have saved with the auto start stop feature. So as long as I don't turn this off using this button here, this is gonna show me how much gas I save every time that I come to a stop and it turns the motor off. It's a neat little feature just so that you can keep track of it if you are using it. My next screen down, this is gonna show me when I'm in four by four versus the front wheel drive. And if I wanna monitor it, it can be done from this screen here. Next screen over to the right is for my navigation. Now what's really neat about this is right now I've only got the one screen showing here. Now over here on my infotainment system, I'm gonna go in here and say points of interest and I want a coffee shop and then from here, it's gonna load my coffee shops. Now, I'm gonna use Tim Hortons on Baker Drive because now that I have this pretty much set, when I come back over here, all of a sudden, there's a dot over here. And now, if I scroll down, I can actually see the map on my screen here. Super neat the way that this works out. It'll give me all my directions and everything right from here. Next screen over is my radio info. And from this screen, I have total control of everything the to do. calculation is complete. Proceed to the nearest road. Everything to do with my audio with a push of a thumb right from this screen here. So we've already seen that I can increase or decrease the volume here. I can go through my presets or skip tracks. But from this screen here, if I press the OK button, I can change the source of my audio and it shows me everything there. 
really, really neat. Keeps me from having to look over this way to set anything. Full control, all with my thumb, all while I'm driving and keeping my eyes forward on the road. Next screen over is for my adaptive cruise. So along with the three little lines that we saw over here, I've also got the same three lines here. Now if I adjust them, it adjusts in each spot. Now the other neat thing is if I turn my cruise off and instead of just pressing this button, I'm gonna press and hold. Now I'm back to just normal everyday cruise control. So it's no longer adaptive cruise, Pro Pilot won't work, it's just normal cruise control. So I'm gonna turn it off and turn it back on. I see my safety features show up, which we're gonna talk about here in just a moment. And then I'm gone back over to my adaptive cruise screen. I'm gonna scroll down as there are three dots on this screen. My speed limit sign. As I pass by a speed limit sign, it's going to post that on this screen. It's also gonna post it on the heads up display, which we'll have a look at here in just a moment. But all I gotta do is pass by that speed limit sign and then it's here. I always know what the speed is at any given point. And when I scroll one more, our safety features. Our entire Safety Shield 360 is equipped on this Pathfinder. So with that, you have automatic emergency braking with forward collision warning in the front. And the forward collision warning is something that you are going to experience. What that means is you'll be driving along and the car in front of you might be turning onto a side road. They're slowed down to about 10 or 15 to make that turn. You're doing 50 as you approach them. And as soon as the radar gets within range that it sees that you're now closing that distance really quick, it will beep at you and flash a warning across the top of the screen here because there is a risk of a collision unless something changes. The moment that car finishes rounding the turn, nothing happens, or if you touch the brake, that all turns off as well. Your automatic emergency braking, hopefully you never experience it, but if you do, again, the car in front of you piles on the brakes, you're now closing that distance really quick inside the vehicle, it will beep at you. It'll flash a warning on the top of the screen. The gas pedal is going to push back against your foot a little bit. And if you don't get to the brake fast enough, which is absurd as it sounds, it does happen. Your Pathfinder will start to apply the brakes for you to help avoid or minimize an oncoming collision. Now, again, as soon as you are on the brakes, that whole system turns off because you're in total control of the vehicle. Your pedestrian detection works the exact same way, except instead of using the radar in behind the Nissan emblem in the front of the vehicle, it's gonna use the camera up and behind your mirror there. It's gonna work the exact same way, but it's gonna happen even faster. The reason being the car in front of you that piled on the brakes still has a little bit of forward momentum, while the person who simply walked out in front of you does not. You also have lane departure warning which again, that same camera up there is gonna be used to read the lines on either side of you while you are doing 60 kilometers an hour or higher. And it's gonna read the lines there. And as you start to drift out of your lane, it will vibrate your haptic steering wheel. It's just letting you know that, hey, you're drifting out of your lane. Works the exact same as the rumble strips on the side of the highway. You have blind spot indicators, which are out on the corners of your mirrors. I can see right there and it's on the other one as well. When you're doing 32 kilometers an hour or higher and you have a vehicle in your blind spot, a vehicle that is in motion and not parked, and it needs to be in your blind spot while you're doing 32 kilometers an hour, the blind spot indicator on that side of the vehicle will light up and stay lit up a dull orange as long as part of that vehicle is still there. Now, while that indicator is lit up a dull orange, if you signal to go that way. So let's say for example, my driver's side indicator is lit up and while it's lit up, I signal to go left. That's gonna to start to flash. It's gonna beep at me inside the vehicle here. It's letting me know I need to have a look over my shoulder. There is something in my blind spot. If I still try and go left anyway, the right side brakes on the vehicle are gonna tap very subtly to help pull you back into your lane. That is your blind spot intervention. You have rear cross traffic detection on this, which is for backing out of a parking spot. If there's anything coming at you from either side within approximately two car lengths inside the vehicle, it will beep at you. And whichever side it's approaching you from, the blind spot indicator on that side of the vehicle will be flashing to let you know, whoop, hold up, you've got something coming at you from this side of the vehicle. 
Finally, we have our rear sonar and rear emergency braking, which we did see. The rear sonar will beep as you start to get close to something and the rear emergency braking, if I'm still backing up as I get near those red hash marks, will fully stop the vehicle in place. It'll hold those brakes for two seconds before it releases them, giving you plenty of time to put your foot on the brake. Now we are going to force our headlights on by covering, hopefully the right sensor right there. And let's try the other sensor on the other side. And my headlights are set to auto. So I'm gonna force my headlights on here so that I can go through and make sure that my high beam assist is also on. Okay, so when my high beam assist is on, I can see right up here, this little green bullet with the A, that tells me high beam assist is on. Now, if I put my high beams on, the blue light comes on as normal. When I do it again, my high beam assist is no longer on. To turn that on, I'm simply gonna push this button on the end of my signal indicator. That comes back on and I'm back to high beam assist. I had to use my wipers in order to trigger this to get it on. That's all gonna turn back off there in just a moment now that the wipers are back to where they need to be. Our next screen over is our settings. This is our last screen here. So when I go into the settings by pressing the okay button, I wanna make sure that everything is turned on for my driver assist. So my steering assist is on, that's our pro pilot, which I can physically turn off either here or in the screen. So if I push this, it turns it off. I can turn it back on right there, same thing. So that's all good. That screen's gonna go away. We're gonna go down to our lane assist, make sure that's all turned on. We're gonna come back out of there and make sure that our blind spot indicators for the warning and intervention are turned on. Emergency assist is our front and rear emergency braking. Again, turned on, speed limit sign is on. Parking aids, so that is to do with your rear sonar. Rear cross traffic alert is on, driver alertness. So driver alertness is a neat little function. If you correct your steering a lot, in a short period of time within your lane, eventually it is gonna pop up with a picture of a coffee cup up here and ask you if it's time for a break. It's realizing that you might not be as alert as you were starting out. You've corrected your steering a lot and maybe it's time to pull over and get it to your coffee or simply get out and stretch your legs, whatever you need to do just to make sure that you're good and alert and staying within your lane. The rest of that is all fine. We don't need to worry about any of that. So we're going to back out of there. Personal display is just what's going to show right here. I like to have the drive indicator there. My heads up display. So this is really neat. The brightness is for the heads up display, which we'll look at in a moment. But you can also change your height to go up or down or your rotation to kind of turn it so we can see it will turn it's kind of making it crooked this way, or I can do it back the other way. I'm gonna put this back to my center and then we're all good there. We'll back out of there. Eco mode settings are fine. TPMS is your tires, clock, vehicle settings. So in here, I wanna come down to locking and then I wanna make sure that this is set for shift to park that way anytime. I shift into park, it's automatically gonna unlock my doors for me and I don't need to go hunting for anything. We'll back out of there. And with our wipers, make sure that both of these are on. That's your rain sensor and reverse link. And then you're all good with all of that. The last thing, your maintenance, you don't need to do anything with. Service is already set for 16,000 kilometers and it will tick down as you're going. So it makes it really easy. Don't be afraid to play with anything because if need be, there is a factory reset right here, which will take care of everything that you need. And down here on my dash, this is for the brightness on my dash when my lights are on. This, as we saw, will turn on or off the Pro Pilot Assist. As long as I'm in park, I can open or close the rear hatch from inside the vehicle. Now this is for my heads up display, which if I look up on the screen up here, I can see I've got my speedometer. Because my adaptive cruise is on, I can see that. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and again on the map, I'm gonna set a destination because I want you to see what happens with that as well. So going through here and we'll see. The route search. calculation is complete. Proceed to the nearest road. Now with that, once I start to drive on the left side of this little road, I'm gonna get an arrow going up to the right, up to the left or straight, depending on which turn or direction I'm going for my destination. And it's gonna count down my distance there as well. And then depending on what I do with my radio, I can see on the top of my heads up display, it may show me some radio information there as well. Below my speedometer over here, it will post that speed limit sign as well as you pass by one. So tons of information. And then in here, where I've got my three bars and the road, if there's a car ahead of me that is within range, it'll show that above the bars. And then all of that stuff will turn green when the Pro Pilot kicks in. Just check out my video on the Pro Pilot Assist and the heads up display. You'll see how all of that works and what can be shown few controls here over in the door. So I've got all my windows here. I've got the lock for my windows. To set my mirrors, I'm simply gonna press the side that I want, and then I can go ahead and set it. Once I'm done setting my mirrors, press that button again to turn that back off. So if I accidentally hit this, nothing happens. But this button in the center here, if I press that, that is my auto folding side mirrors, which makes things really easy. And then press it again to put them back out lock and unlock are up here. I do have memory seats right here. So once I have my driver's seat set for me and my side mirrors are all set and my power adjusting steering column is all set as well. I'm gonna go ahead and press set and then one and that's gonna set driving position one which I can see up on the screen there as well. Driver number two can do the same thing. It's gonna take about a week to hit your sweet spot once you do, after that, when you get in the vehicle, after somebody else has been driving, all you gotta do is press one and it will take you back to all of your settings for your seat, your steering wheel, and your side mirrors. Now this still comes equipped with an intelligent key system, except it's a little bit different. So instead of physical buttons on the side of the door here, to unlock this, as long as I have the key on me, mine is in my pocket here, as we can see. So I'm going to put that back in my pocket. It just needs to be within about three feet of where you're at. I hear a beep. I can pull open the handle and in I go. Once everybody's out and the doors are all shut, all I got to do is touch the three bars. And that is on every door on the vehicle. So in the back, I'm going to have a quick look here because I've got captain seats in the back of this beautiful Pathfinder. With that, down below here is a button that when I push this button, my seat moves up to give me quick, easy access to the back. Once I'm in the back and the seat is back in place, if I'm sitting back there and want to get out, same button here. And all I got to do is push that back. There is a bar under the seat to be able to move it. Climate control for the back is all right here. Now the vehicle's currently turned off. I can set it for auto. I can adjust my temperature over on the right hand side here. These two seats are heated seats. I can adjust my fan or where my airflow is gonna go. Down below here, I still have my two USB ports strictly for charging for these ones where the ones in the front will interact with the system. But I also have a 120 volt physical plug. Also in the back here, because it's got the captain seats, I have this center console with the kidney shaped cup holders. I've got a big storage area down here, but what's really neat about this is down here in the front. I'm going to pop this open. No, I did not break it. It is meant to do that. There is a handle in here. Now if I push that, this will come right out to give me more access right up through the center here to be able to move around. Or I can simply put it back in place just by clicking it all in. And then once again, popping that cover back on and everything is good. As we move around the back, my gas tank simply pops open and is a capless gas tank. Just regular gas that goes in, push that back in. I've got my hitch down here 
and plug for it. I have a camera down below here. And because again, I have my key on me, I have kick motion activation on this. I have my storage area in the back here. Very easy to drop everything down. Simply pull down on that and then lift up on that and down it goes, giving me a ton of storage area. Or pull up and lift up on that. To go with the storage area here, you have additional storage down inside here. Now to access your spare tire, you're simply gonna pop this off and then Inside here is your jack and tire iron. Grab your tire iron, put it on here, and start turning it. From there, it will lower your tire to the ground underneath the vehicle. We pop that back in place, put that all back in, close that back off again. And again, up here, I can close with this, or if I push this button, it's gonna close and lock the entire vehicle all at once, making it really easy to go through and do what I need to do. One of the last things I want to go over here is your key fob. Now on my key fob, I have a panic button or what most people like to use it for is to find the current parking lot. I have a button here on my key fob that I can use to open or close the rear hatch. Unlock, lock, then you have a remote start with this. So to use your remote start, you're going to press lock, lock, and then press and hold the top button for five full seconds. From there, it will remote start your vehicle from up to 200 feet away. It's gonna run for up to 10 minutes, and if you don't get in within that time frame, it will turn back off. However, once you get in to engage your vehicle, put your foot on the brake, and then press your start button. It will engage the vehicle. Everything here will light up for you, and you're good to go. Otherwise, you're gonna get in, you're gonna put your foot on the brake, you're gonna grab the gear shift, and it's gonna turn off on you. Also with this, because it's a key fob, the battery inside of your key fob is typically good for two to four years. Your very first indication that it's time to switch your battery is you'll hop in, you'll put your foot on the brake, hit the start button, and up here it will pop up and say incorrect key ID. Don't worry, you still have your key with you, everything's fine, your battery's starting to get low, let the message go away, try and start it again and everything should be okay. If you hit the point that you just cannot get it started or maybe you can't even get into the vehicle unlocking it with this on the back there is a switch there's a key for the driver's side door that will get you into the vehicle now once you're in the vehicle there is no key for the ignition so you're going to take a key fob with the nissan emblem and your foot on the brake use your key fob to push in your start button it will still start your vehicle even though the fob battery is dead. To switch your key fob battery, pop the key out, get a flat head in either here or here and give it a twist. Pop this open. The battery inside is either gonna be a CR2032 or a CR2025. It will say right on the battery and it will say on the inside of the casing here. Make sure you get the same size battery. Pop that in, clip it all back together. And then once you do, simply take your key, put it back in place and you're good to go. Nothing extra has to be done. Congratulations again on your 2022 Nissan Pathfinder Platinum. This is an absolutely amazing vehicle. I love driving this. The comfort level is through the roof, tons of room for family activities and an all around great drive. If you have any other questions after going through all this, please do not hesitate to reach out. You can call, text, or email, or stop into a Regan's Nissan at 60 Baker Drive in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. We'll do everything that we can to answer all of your questions for you. I look forward to seeing you anytime that you're in for your regular service and for when it's time for your next vehicle.